You can't control the room. You can only control yourself. So how do you set yourself up in a way that subconsciously controls the room? Great. That's the theme Great. of the, that whole lesson. Great. So what I want us to think about, I do mention in it that a slide deck necessarily has you turning away from the audience and a handout has you between, right? Like a meal, but... I think one important thing about a handout is as soon as you give people a handout, they start looking at it. So you need to be really careful about when and what you hand out. That's one of the most dangerous things about a handout because yeah, you can be presenting and rolling, right? Yeah. And then what happens is someone is over here They're going, like, oh, Dr. Yeah. McAndrew, <laughs> I see. <laughs> I, I always tell students, don't present your handouts and don't hand out your presentations. Yeah. Um, I think they're two separate animals, and I agree that giving your I hand out that. early in a presentation is is definitely it's a huge mistake. So, Dave, talk about that a little more. What separates a handout and a presentation in your? A, a in presentation your depends on you being there, and a good handout, you wouldn't need to be there at all. It it should explain itself, and it should speak in a clear, textual narrative or whatever. I mean, it should. It's it's almost like a kiosk, um, whereas. Students ask me for copies of my presentations and I always tell them yeah. they won't mean a thing to you because without me there, my presentations, they're just impressionistic. Isn't that a common mistake that we probably all see is when people have presentation slides that are behind them, they put too much information on them. And what, so what you're saying is if you have a handout, maybe it goes out at the end, but it has more of the context. But the slides themselves are supporting documents for whoever's giving the presentation. That's right, but then let me play devil's advocate a little bit. When someone has a lot of information, perhaps they're, they're only the delivery person, uh, the messenger, and their company feels like, you know, this is what needs to be said about this topic. Mm -hmm. Dave, how do you get around that? Because uh, that puts a, a presenter in a really awkward yeah. position. I agree with you. Well, you can't get around it in that case. Um, but you have to make darn sure those slides are very, very clear and that the audience can look at each slide, understand what it is that that slide has to say very, very quickly and then return their attention to the presenter. So what I prefer to do in cases like that is put less information on each slide and use more slides. Oh, so that the slides don't become yeah. what I call sticky. That that's you look great. at it and you get stuck on it and the right. poor presenter is left Right, it's like having a handout up on the screen and you're looking at the slide trying to decipher the slide and you're not paying attention to the person you should be paying attention to. I like that concept of stickiness um, because basically too many words make things sticky. Yeah. So <laughs> one thing I've been talking about in, in my lessons is the notion of a keyword. And a keyword I think is very useful to the speaker because if the speaker, the speaker can get stuck as well, right? Yeah. If you're trying to memorize a script and say, I have to say all these sentences, you're getting stuck in them and your mouth gets all blah, 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 <laughs> and you can't get through it. If you focus on a keyword and if that keyword is behind you on a screen, you can make it through because Bam. you know what the keyword means and you just need to explain it. There are studies, or, or I read about an experiment once that said if you think the word banana, it's, an, it's hard to think that word with your mouth open because we tend to mouth what we read, believe it or not. Huh. And so if your slides are crazy complex with all sorts of text, um, it's hard on an audience because they're trying to read along and listen to you at the same time. That's great. That's and we don't great. want anything. Remember, we don't want anything to be hard on our audience. We're no, making no. the best experience for them possible. Your audience has to feel that they are embraced by you because it's only in that warm embrace, that, that sense that they're all part of one community, that they're going to trust and therefore give you the authority that you need to make your point. Yep. Yep.